Today, I'd like to talk about sewing to attach. I have a previous video on sewing things to attach to amigurumi, particularly in Crafty Intentions patterns, but I'd like to cover a couple more things that I think might help you as you sew to attach. So one of the first things that you'll need is a darning needle, and not all darning needles are created equal. This is a really classic darning needle. It is um, maybe two inches long. It's dull, not sharp, not going to hurt you. It's got quite a big hole. And this is probably what most people use to stitch together their crochet work. It works because it's not sharp and you don't need super sharp for crochet work in general, but it's not very long. And because the hole is so big, it can sometimes be hard to pull through the really tight stitches of amigurumi. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this, although I, I do have a lot of those. This is the next kind of hook or needle that I found to use. And I do like these. They're very similar to the first, just a teensy tiny bit longer, still a pretty big hole. Um, so that can be a, a problem sometimes, but this slight bend at the end of the needle here, that can really help you get leverage that you need to go under a piece and and really stitch it closely together to a body um, when you're following crafty intentions patterns. So I do recommend needles that have that slight little curve to them. One of my favorites that I've recently found is this is a leather working needle. I don't know the technical name. I do know that you can find these in packages of needles on websites like Amazon for just about $5, you get a big package of needles and they come with at least one of these. This is uh, just as long, if not a little bit longer than that first needle. Yeah, a little bit longer, maybe half an inch longer. It does have a curved tip, but the tip is also a little bit wider. It has this wide diamond and it's a little bit sharper. It's still not going to hurt you very badly. As you can see, it's not super, sh super sharp. It's not hurting me, but it is sharper than the other darning needles. So this is going to do a better job of sliding like butter into your crochet work and creating the space necessary because of this wider tip for that hole to get through in the end. So you'll have less of a struggle shoving this needle through your work and getting that leverage with that slightly curved, slightly wider tip. So I would highly recommend needles like this to sew your work together. And last, length of the needle definitely helps. So this is a not a fancy needle, also a little bit thinner than that first needle, and the hole is a little bit smaller, so if you're using a chunky yarn, this may not work for you. You may still need a, a larger hold needle, but this one is at least three inches long, and it gives me the length and leverage I need to push the needle all the way through thicker pieces of crochet work, like unicorns or dragons, get all the way through a shoulder and be able to pull it through the other side. It's very sharp. It's sharper uh, than this leather working needle. And so it slides through a lot easier. I do still have some trouble sometimes pulling that doubled over yarn through the needle hole through the crochet work. But with the length and the fact that I can leverage the length to change the direction of where the needle comes out of the work, this really helps. The length of the needle really, really helps. So what I'm trying to tell you is that your tool definitely matters when you are sewing a piece together and that I would recommend longer and curved or just plain longer over these shorter dull guys. Um, the sharpness and the length really does help. So particularly when sewing together, I would recommend the curved needle. When doing soft sculpting, you just need something straight. Curved can sometimes mess with you if you're trying to do soft sculpting. So I'm going to take the yarn tail of this unicorn's neck 
and I'm going to use this extra long needle to show you how I use it to sew to attach. I insert the needle into the edge of the first piece that I want to attach and then in and out of the head and I'm able to yank that through no issues. You want to do small stitches. This this pin was getting in my way so I'm going to move that but I'm going to try to insert the needle right where the pin was and then in and out of the head right where the pin was holding it to and then pull that through and pull it really tight. I want these stitches to be small and not very noticeable. The point is to get them to almost disappear into your crochet work. So you want these really tiny whip stitches to meld the seam of your body piece to the head or any other piece to the body of your crochet work. I plan these stitches really closely and then I pull the needle through. See how that seam is still slightly visible but it's starting to disappear into the crochet work so that you can't really tell where the body starts and where the head starts. It's just sort of all one piece. You can go in and out of the same stitch. You're trying to achieve seamlessness and you're trying to shape it as you go. So I'm down to where the second pin is. I'm going to take that pin out and now I have this corner flap of the neck. I'm going to insert a hook. I think I can get two stitches into here because there are two stitches on the crochet work. So I'm going to start with this one and start pulling it closer to where that pin was holding it to. And then I'm going to go into the last available stitch on the end of the neck flap and really pull that into place. Now, as you can see, there's still all of this to sew to attach, and then this under here, this neck hole. I'm going to start working on that, working into the sides of the stitches, and still working in and out of a stitch. creating a smooth transition. You can almost not see anymore where that neck flap started and where the head begins. To do the underside of the neck, I'm going to insert into one stitch of the body and then about where I want it to attach to the head in and out one stitch and pull that through. I'm going to keep doing that. To sew this hole shut. Now see here is where it might be useful to have a curved needle. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Instead of struggling to get the needle into the next stitch, into the head, and out of the head, and then be able to pull it through, with a curved needle I can insert it into that stitch and then insert it almost straight into the body and out again and it's a little easier because the end of that needle is curved. 
so it does some of the work for me rather than uh, putting extra effort into twisting my hands or my wrists around to get the right angles. And this is a tricky bit anyway underneath heads, so any help you can get using good tools is great. Going to go in and out. And we have it sewn to attach. So now I'm going to lower the head, twist it so that it's sitting on there nice and straight. And now what I would ordinarily do is weave in the end because I'm all done, but I'm going to save it for the next video on soft sculpting. So I hope that helped.